Arcade Perfect My Arse Right, okay folks, welcome to another Arcade Perfect My Arse um, I'm well aware that uh, these uh, videos are becoming thinner on the ground and it's for one simple reason I have quite literally covered every arcade game that I want to cover so the ones that you're getting now are not really my favourite so anyway this arcade game by Atari Games released in 1985 um, it used the, I mean that sound there, it used the the, the same hardware that Tubin uh, APB Paperboy used I kind of look upon that as the non a uh, classic Atari. I mean, the Atari for me is always going to be the stuff like Battlezone and all that kind of stuff. But you know, these are still classic games. And the thing is, the the graphics in this particular system it allowed for beautiful looking cartoon graphics. I mean, this could be the cartoon you're watching. Whether that makes a game a good game is a different question altogether. So the idea of the game is to pick up the the bird seed you play the part of a roadrunner and you're obviously being pursued relentlessly by Wile E. Coyote. I always preferred Wile E. Coyote to the, uh, the, the roadrunner if I'm being honest. I mean, looks and sound, it's like the cartoon. It's fiendishly difficult to play, um, possibly if you're using you know, the proper hardware on the arcade, it might have been easier. I'm assuming it must have been some sort of trackball type device, some certainly some analogue device. But uh, trying to play this like I am with a joystick, it's next to impossible. When I was recording, I was trying to think of the name of that tune, and it's William Tell Overture, of course it is. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, it's a, a a nice game. It's 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 very uh, it's very appealing. It's got lovely sounds and what have you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, like I said, it's, it's just ridiculously difficult. Right, let's take a look at some home versions. Uh, MS DOS, yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing back in 1985. That was a thing, folks, back in the good old days of PC. You had to calibrate your joystick every game for every game that you played. This is, isn't bad. I mean, look at the graphics. Graphics are all right. It's a bit slower than the arcade one, but you know what? That's probably a good thing because the arcade was so fast, so twitchy, uh, especially trying to obviously play by an analog stick. Now, I suppose the good thing about home conversions is they are going to be adapted to uh, to work with joysticks rather than analog uh, controls. So, I mean, the, the sound's there, graphics are there, nothing wrong with us. The one thing this does lack that the arcade had, um, it's the, uh, the parallax scrolling. The arcade one did have some really nice kind of layers of background graphics. The thing about this game that I don't like is, I mean, it does, it looks beautiful. You can't fault the visuals. It's, you know, it's really, really nice looking, but it's such a simple kind of game. You're just moving up and down, picking up birdseed. One thing about these arcade perfect my arse is if I'm playing a game that I'm not a big fan of like this, 
by the time you played the, the 15th version, you never want to play it ever again. <laughs> not to say this is a bad game, it's not. It's just me. That was never going to end well. But yeah, I never actually appreciated that uh, you could get all, so many arcade games to the PC. I thought that the PC back in 1985 was firmly in the realms of spreadsheets and uh, word processing. Because the thing is, it must, it must have been ridiculously expensive back in 1985, so anyone that was going to be buying one wasn't going to be uh, buying it to play Roadrunner. Well, at least that's what I think. Aye, that tune! What tune is that? <laughs> what is the name of that tune? That was the tune I was thinking about, not the William Tell Overture one. If somebody can tell me the name of that tune, I would be eternally grateful. So that is IBM DOS. Now, this is the one that I did play back in the day, the Atari ST. Now, Bear in mind, it was uh, an Atari, it was an Atari game, and this was their machine, so you'd like to think that they would try and make a good version, and from what I can see here, it is pretty damned accurate. You see there, it's even got the sort of parallax scrolling, which is really nice. Interestingly, there was never uh, an Amiga version released. It's possible that either Atari didn't want it released in Amiga, unlikely, um, because it was their rival machine. Probably more to do with the fact that I don't actually know when this came out for home computers. It was quite an early game, and it's possible that the Amiga really wasn't. It didn't have a big installed user base at that point, so they didn't think there was any point in doing that. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, they just, I mean, the difficulty of this game, it's just, they've made it twitchy and awkward. And that's not a kind of difficulty that I like. You kind of get stuck when you're trying to manoeuvre about. Like I said, it was an arcade game. Um, it's quite possible that using the proper arcade controls, it was easier to play. It's like Paperboy, you know, Paperboy needed the bespoke arcade uh, controls, same with APB, you know, it's virtually unplayable in MAME, um, you need the proper controls, I can't remember what they were, but yeah. Yeah, what is that tune? But yeah, I mean, the graphics are absolutely delightful. I'm surprised they didn't make more, uh, more kind of cartoon uh, arcade games. I suppose this kind of game, the, the cartoon based on Roadrunner, or the Roadrunner cartoon, did lend itself pretty well to an arcade game given the whole context of getting relentlessly chased. So that is the Atari ST. Next up, first of the 8 bits. So this is the Commodore 64. Now 
Now, I thought that I might have had the uh, barrel axe scrolling, but for some reason it doesn't. Nice graphics, I mean, flicker free, silky smooth uh, scrolling. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what is the idea of the the little uh, animation at the top with the, the roadrunner. Is that if you miss a seed, does he move along? I think if you miss five seeds, then you lose a life. That certainly seemed a bit shorter and easier, which is not a bad thing. Obviously the side chip does an admirable, admirable job with the, the sound and the music. Music and you at sound effects. Now, this was a multi load. I did actually cut out about the loading just to make it quicker. You didn't really want to see this loading constantly. absolutely no idea how many levels are in this game. I would imagine not very many, because that's the thing about arcade games, the difficulty was such high, or so high, that they didn't really have to have a lot of levels. I'm not quite sure about the replayability factor of this game, I think that'd be pretty low. I think once you'd completed it, would you have any real reason to return to it? Nah, I don't think so. There you go, that's obviously easier. That's the Commodore 64 one. Right, the one and only uh, console version, I think. Yeah, I think it is. This is uh, the NES. Graphically, um, probably slightly better than the Commodore 64. Um, the bird seed actually looks like little pills of bird seed, whereas in the C64 it was just little dots of yellow. Um, this one doesn't have the parallax scrolling either, and the scrolling isn't quite as good as the C64. The C64 one was silky smooth. Quite sure had this appeared for the the, the, SNES, the, like the SNES or the Mega Drive, you would have got an arcade perfect uh, version. I was actually surprised to see it came out in 1985. I thought that was a bit later, but obviously not. Now, I think you can jump. I'm not quite sure what that actually does. Not that I've actually jumped at all in any of the goals I've had in this. I 
drank zero lemonades. I don't know where you get them about. Wah, 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 wah. Now, I, would, I never thought I would say this, but the colours in this look muted compared to the Commodore 64. The 64 didn't have a very uh, bright kind of colour palette, but this one does look very dull, but, you know, the colours, nothing wrong with the colours, it's just, it's not bright and vibrant. Right, that's the first version uh, so far that's got that little kind of outro bit, which is quite nice. Right, the next one we've got here is the Amstrad CPC. Now the first thing you notice is the extremely small play area. What is the reason for that? Would that be uh, due to a sort of a, you know, inability to scroll full screen? So if they make it smaller, it will make it easier, possibly. If anyone can tell me the reason, please uh, put the comment below. Graphics, lovely. I mean, it's the, the thing about the Amstrad, uh, the colour palette is really, really vibrant. It's bright, and it's, it's when when done properly, it's lovely. Absolutely no music. Um, I don't know whether there was a button to, to add music. Um, a few sound effects. Scrolling's not bad. I mean, it's not as nice. As the C64, but it's it's perfectly uh, doable. It's just a shame that most of the gameplay is uh, in complete silence. I'm not really a massive fan of music in games, arcade games in particular, especially when it's kind of sort of, you know, quick reaction, twitch, kind of shootery type things, but something like this I think definitely needs, uh, definitely needs some music, especially being a kind of cartoon type game, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it is nice, but again, the, you know, the lack of sound and extremely small play area does, uh, does kind of spoil the experience a wee bit, I think. Right from one 8 bit to another 8 bit, this time it's the ZX Spectrum. And it's even got some sound, I mean, there you go, the Spectrum's got sound, so why couldn't Amstrad 1 have sound? <laughs> I'm looking at the uh, the Coyote now. In the other versions, including arcade, I think his legs kind of are like a little blur because they're running so fast. In this one, he's actually running, and he reminds me of a cross between the, the players out of a uh, match day, and uh, yeah, no match day. He does. It, it looks it looks a bit weird. <laughs> Obviously the colours are limited, a bit of colour clash going on at the top there. They've tried to retain the, you know, 
they could have easily gone down this sort of monochromatic route, which they tend to do with a lot of uh, arcade conversions, but they have tried to include some colour. Yeah, horrible colour clash at the top there. Half your can eat the, the main characters are completely obscured. It does have quite a nice little beep sound when it picks up seed. I don't know if it's meant to do that, but it does sound uh, sounds like it's been kind of digitised. Now again, I had music at the on the title screen, and again in the actual game, it's completely quiet apart from the odd uh, sound effect. Yeah, see that would annoy me. The amount of colour clash. The thing's completely kind of been obscured with the background colour. Yeah, look at that. It's, <laughs> that's a mess. So, there you have it, folks. That is every home version of uh, Roadrunner. Now, uh, what can I say? Uh, the IBM one actually quite nice, scrolling wasn't great, graphics were nice, sounds not bad, uh, Atari ST one was virtually arcade perfect, um, it really was graphics, sound, uh, everything about it was really good, Commodore 64 is a really nice version, easily the, the best 8-bit version, which to be fair isn't saying much, um, but to be fair, the C64 one did look and play like the arcade one. Uh, NES one, again, really, really nice. Um, slightly more muted colours, but it looked, it lo absolutely looked apart. Um, Amstrad, uh, completely, you know, no sound, tiny playing area, um, no music, you know, the odd spot sound effect. Um, I think it could have been better, if I'm being honest. Spectrum 1, I'm going to say it's probably the worst version. Um, you know, it did have limited colour, but the colour clash, and there was times where you're, you're, the, the thing you're controlling, you just simply couldn't see. And again, there was, uh, despite having music in the title screen, there was absolutely none in the main game. Um, so, yeah, if you really, really had to play this game, I think in third place, I'm going to go for the IBM uh, MS-DOS version. Second place, I'm going to go for the Commodore 64 version, but I think there's only one version of this that you're going to want to play, home version of this, and it has to be the Atari ST, um, because it is virtually arcade perfect, albeit a bit easier and with uh, more controllable controls. Um, that said, I don't think this is a particularly good game. Uh, would I really want to play it again? Probably not. But anyway, folks, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thank you very, very much for watching.